Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to very easily and very quickly paint the Negan character from the Mantic Games board game, He is Negan. Whilst this is the Negan character, you can use these techniques to paint any of the other survivors in that box set, or indeed any of the survivors from the Walking Dead All Out War game. Now I've started here by priming the miniature black, and then I've come in from above with a ghost grey. The reason for this is one, it gives a bit of a pre-shade to the miniature and helps with some shading later on, but the main reason really is so that it shows up on camera a little better. So just before I get started, I've been asked a few questions, um, specifically by lots of beginner painters, about what size brushes I use. Uh, and for this miniature, I'll be using a size 2 brush for pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing I won't be using it for is for a little bit of dry brushing later on. Uh, as long as the brush has a good point, size 2 will uh, pretty much do anything you need it to do. So we're going to start by painting the t-shirt and we're going to use Ulth One Grey. Uh, the reason I'm not using white here uh, is because we need to have something slightly darker so we can highlight up to it. As white isn't really a colour you want to use washers to, uh, to create shade. So just thin the paint a little bit and just block in all of that t-shirt colour. So try and be as neat as you can uh, because if you do go over a little bit, the other colours are going to be darker and you'll be able to cover it a lot better if we start with the light t-shirt. So finish that up, let it dry and we'll come on to the next stage. For this next stage we're going to paint the jeans and for this we're going to use Canto Blue. So just thin it down a little bit uh, because if you have pre-shaded it, some of that will help with shading and just block in all of the trousers as neat as you can. Once you finish this, let it dry and we'll come back and do the next stage. Next stage is we're going to paint the skin and for this we're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone. Just uh, thin the paint down a little bit and paint all of the flesh areas. When you're doing the face, just try and um, miss out the eyes. Uh, I tend not to paint the eyes when I'm doing very fast beginner paint jobs. If you're feeling brave, by all means go in and do them. Uh, however, if you don't paint them, when we come in with the wash, it just makes them that little bit darker uh, and makes it look slightly more realistic rather than having flesh-coloured eyes. So, once you've done all of that, let it dry and we'll come back to the next stage. Okay, you can see here we've finished the skin. Don't worry too much about how it looks at the moment, as once we come in and wash it and highlight it again later, it'll look much better. Next, we're going to come in with a bad and black and we're going to paint his boots, his belt, his gun and his hair. So again, just thin down your paint slightly and just make sure you block in all those colours. 90% of beginner painting and doing quick jobs is just about getting the base colours in really neatly. So just concentrate on that. Once it's done, we'll move on to the next step. Next stage is we're going to paint Rhinox Hide and we're going to use this to paint the strap on his gun and also on Lucille the Bat. So again, just thin it down a little bit and we're just going to paint along the strap here and then come in and paint the bat. Don't worry too much about the barbed wire parts at the moment, we just, off, just cover those over when you're painting the Rhinox and we'll come back and we'll highlight those up with silver later on. Once that's finished, we'll go on to the next stage. So we're now at the stage where we've blocked in all of the basic colours. The next stage is we're going to take a Reichland flesh shade wash and we're going to wash it over the skin. Just make sure they thin it down a little bit, we don't want it to pull too much. We are going to use it on the arms, but that's more just to match it in with the face colour. What we really want to do is to pick out the features of the face. So just thin it down a little, brush it in, if you find it pulling too much, just use a dry brush to wick some of it away, and then let it dry, and we'll come back and do the next step. So once that flesh shade has completely dried, we're going to move on to the next stage, which is we're going to put the rune fang steel onto where the barbed wire is and we're also going to use it on the gun too. Now I've mentioned dry brushing in a couple of my videos now and just for beginners I thought I'd explain exactly what dry brushing is. So basically you dip your dry brush into the, the pot of paint and you basically scrub off as much of that paint as you can onto a paper towel. Uh, if I just rub it across my knuckle here you can see there's none actually comes off. And then what you want to do is you want to basically drag the brush along the high points where the barbed wire is and just picking up on those top edges. Don't scrub up and down, just drag it down in one direction so you're picking up from the top down towards the bottom. If you screw it around, the chances are you'll get more of it actually onto the back. So do exactly the same on the gun as well. Uh, very lightly, you can just see that it's just picking up on the edges and it just gives a bit of a metallic -y look to the, to the gun. So once you've done that, we'll do the next stage. Now you could, if you want to, just leave it at that stage if you just want a really basic tabletop standard. However, we're going to take it a little step further and we're going to try and highlight up the face. 
So again, just using the Cadian flesh tone, we're going to just very sort of lightly just highlight the bridge of the nose across the top of the cheekbones and on the forehead. Uh, we're also going to do a little bit on the forearms as well and on the inside of the arm that's raising the bat. A little bit on the tips of the fingers as well. Just imagine where the light would be hitting it if it was coming from above. Uh, and once we've done that, we'll come on to the next stage. So I've just tied up that skin there a little bit. And this really is just a, a very slightly advanced basic tabletop standard. It's not designed to be kind of pro painted or anything like that. This is around trying to get a basic paint job to get them on the tabletop very quickly and an accessible method that beginners can use. So next what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush Calgar Blue onto the front of the jeans just to give a little bit of depth to the denim. So once again using the same dry brush method just dry brush that across both the front and the back of the trousers just brushing in that one direction and then once you've done that we'll move on to the next stage. The next step is we're then going to take white scar and we're just going to highlight the t-shirt. So as you can see where there are some folds uh, clearly showing on the t-shirt, just try and highlight above where the folds are. A little bit on the shoulders and down there, down the sleeve and across the stomach area as well. Don't go over the whole area or you'll lose some of that ultrawan grey underneath and that just gives a little bit of shade to it. Do that again on the front and the back and once you've done that, we'll come on to the last stage. This is pretty much the finished model now, however this step is optional and I'm going to put some blood effects onto the bat. For this I'm using Tamiya Clear Red, uh, this is because I this is what I have at home. If you want to specifically go out and buy something for this, then you can use Citadel's Blood for the Blood God, which is also uh, gives an excellent finish. So what we're going to do is just use an old brush for this, don't use your best paint brush, and just kind of dab it on around the head of the baseball bat. You could if you wanted to drop some onto his shoulder or whatever, but I'm just trying to keep it pretty clean. Last up is I'm just going to paint the base. Uh, you can just paint it black if you like for a board game piece. You can paint it to try and match the tiles in the game. I'm just basing mine so it fits in with all of my other Walking Dead models. So I'll paint up the base and then let's have a look at the finished model. And here we have the finished model. Again, this is just meant to be a really straightforward basic tabletop finish. It's designed to get your minis on the table painted and looking better than grey plastic as quick as you can. If there's any miniatures you'd like to see me paint, drop a message down in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.